okay. And the, which and let me take that a step further. Then, uh, Stan, you know, you, you, one thing I've always admired about you is how quick, quickly, you have been able to respond to these reports and to these encounters and getting out to the site. Uh, to the location so quickly. H- have you ever had any uh, adverse reactions where, you know, for example, with a Bigfoot sighting, there's this uh, phenomenon called zapping or infrasound where, where people have become, you know, dizzy or, or nauseated and uh, felt you know, very strange in, in when, when there's a Bigfoot that's been around. Or an overpowering fear, which is very common. That's what yes, a lot of people yes, exactly. report, and a lot of hunters report. And I will tell you, and I mentioned it in my Silent Invasion book, talking about the 70s, years later after those events happened, uh, one of my associates and I were up in Indiana County because there had been reports later on, years later, of some Bigfoot activity where it had been a lot in the 70s. And we were up there one evening, deep in the woods, investigating some reports. Nothing, I had, didn't see anything, didn't see any Bigfoot, but both myself and my associate about the same time, we had this overpowering, strong feeling that we needed to get out of there really quickly. I've never had it before. Mm -hmm. I've never had it since. And I can't say that's what it was. It wasn't like a terrible fear, but it was just like something said, you need to get out of here right now. And we both had it at the same time. Um, Mm -hmm. Now I've, I've had some incidents. Like I said, I've never seen a Bigfoot or UFO. Uh, one night on one of the farms along the ridge in 73, when all these sightings are going on, and some of my teams at night, we would try to stake out some of the areas where there have been a lot of consistent reports. And there were two farms in Derry Township along the ridge where the owners said on occasion these things kept coming back to the farm. And uh, Mm -hmm. other people had experienced it as well. On this one particular farm, I'm interviewing the people. They had heard the screams and the cries. They had seen the creature within feet. They had had strange lights and objects being seen. Other people had experienced it as well. And one of the people at the farm said to me, they said, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but they said, when we hear this thing scream or we see it, a short time later we start seeing these strange lights and objects illuminating the field. (laughs) That's how they get up. Boy, yes, yes, yes. Long time ago. And, <coughs> I, I'm sorry? Yeah, go ahead. I'm coughing. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. No, not at all. Um, I just – and again, it, it seems like one precipitates the other or one announces the other. And and, and again, there's there's almost no explanation. It, it's just – you you hear this sound, you see this glowing ball of light, and suddenly something else is approaching. And and you've documented this, you know, so incredibly thoroughly, Stan. You know, where there's reports of a UFO and there's a Bigfoot in the field watching it or coming up to it, or vice versa. There's a Bigfoot and then there's a UFO or or other things, and it, it just it just doesn't stop. Um, it's uh, it, it's just, uh, you know, just keeps going on and on and on. Yeah, it's it's just so strange. You know, I said years and years ago, the phenomenon is so strange it protects itself. Because who's going to believe it unless you experience it yourself? Exactly, exactly. And and, it, and it's almost impossible to explain to someone, you know, in, in even these cases where you have people – you know, so, and I'm sure, and I know you've got cases like this. Someone's driving home. It's late at night. They're on a, you know, wooded road. It's very dark, and suddenly they come around a curve, and there's something standing there looking at them, and then suddenly it disappears, or it flies up into the air, or you know, it just, and, and their lives are changed forever, and they can't explain it, and. Then they get home, and then you know, and and things start happening almost as though it's followed them, and, yeah, and their yeah. life is never the same since. Yeah, and and this is something that I was starting to see back years and years ago. And you know, I 
my teams, and I had psychologists in my group, and I had you know investigators, and we learned how to interview people, and, and we didn't want to put words in people's mouth. You didn't want to lead them. You wanted them to tell you what's going on. And he had all these people who were so reluctant. You know, they tell us about what they experienced, and then they began to say, well, there's some other things were going on, but we really don't want to talk about it. And finally they said, well, we'll tell you. And you start getting these amazing stories of all this phenomena going on in their properties and whatever, and there's so many people reporting something similar. And um, mm -hmm. it's just so many mysteries, and there's so many aspects of Bigfoot that people don't know about. And, and one right. that I talk about in lecture is the EM effects, electromagnetic effects associated with Bigfoot that very few people know about or even talk about. And, you know, this is something that was very common with a lot of the low-level, large, low-level, close-range UFO cases back in the 50s and 60s and 70s and periodically on and off since then. But you don't hear about it much mm -hmm. where large, yeah, large structured craft were over cars, for example, and they would lose their power, or the headlights would go out, and the object would move off, and their power would come back on. There were some, even some very bizarre cases, which I had one, where objects were right over top of a car, and they seemed to take complete control of the car with the person in the car having no control over the vehicle for a short time, which was just very, very frightening for these people. And um, But there are cases where a Bigfoot walks out in front of a car, and it loses power, begins to sputter. When the creature walks off, everything comes back mm -hmm. to normal. I had one case yeah. years yeah. ago in a rural area where two people were riding down the road late at night, and they had their high beams on. They come up this area on the road, and suddenly they said, this huge, hairy Bigfoot creature suddenly come, appears out of nowhere. I mean, it wasn't there. They said it just came out of nowhere. They had to swerve around it with their car because the arms and legs were so long, covered with long hair. And right at the point where the car is right next to the creature, suddenly it loses its power. And the passenger is screaming, give it gas, give it gas, get us out of here. And the more the, the yeah. driver would push down on the gas, the slower the car would go. And when it slowly moved away from the creature, all the power came back on and it was okay. And, and and I think what's so fascinating about this is it's why would it a Bigfoot you know and and then as you know in in the Bigfoot community there's a significant purport number of persons who are firmly in the camp of it's a physical creature nothing more nothing less and you know what everyone is entitled to their own opinion I'm I'm not here yeah. to tell anyone whether their opinion's right or wrong I, all I could say is. This is what I have experienced. Here are my facts. You take them and do with them as you will. But even, you know, something like a camera and um, malfunctioning and a, um, or a, a tape recorder malfunctioning, and so the batteries drain instantly. And, oh, Stan, um, I'm very excited. Uh, please welcome my wonderful friend uh, and valued colleague, Linda Godfrey. Linda, good evening. Thank you for calling in. Hello? Linda? L Linda, is that you? Hello. Yes, it is. My voice is not very Linda, good. Li oh, Linda, I'm sorry. You're not feeling well. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's, no, I'm uh, feeling okay. I just have like a scratchy voice. So. Oh, the crowd. Okay. okay. Well, we, it, it, we, it joined, uh, everybody seems to be having something going around uh, lately these days. Linda, good evening. Thank you for calling in. Stan, here's here's the wonderful Linda Godfrey. Linda, good to hear your voice again. Hey, thank you. Good to hear from you, too. I had just emailed Sanjay and said, I'm not going to call in because Stan is too fascinating. I'm selfish. I would rather hear what you have to say. <laughs> you know, no, I, just... no, you have a lot of very good, somewhat similar reports. Well, that's true. That's true. And you're right. They are increasing. The, the the ones with the strange aspects, I don't know if it's just that people are just emboldened now to talk about them, where before they just thought they were, um, you know, baddie to, to even consider that it, they could have been real. Maybe that's it. Maybe the, the incidents are increasing in number themselves, and, the, you know, the whole the universe is just getting weirder. I don't know what it is. But my last book and then the one I've got coming out in July – really do deal with a lot of these things. And 
One one thing that maybe you can give an opinion on that I grapple with myself is how is it, you know, if these aren't real flesh and blood things, that we're all seeing basically the same format in these creatures. You know, we've got the big primate, we've got the upright canines, we've got things that seem half dog and half cat. Believe it or not, we've got all these things that really go back to very ancient um, human artwork in the first civilizations. You know, you can, I pointed this out in, in the book that's coming out, you can um, go through any, excuse me, go through any book of sightings and find almost exact parallels forever. And these are what we're seeing in our own backyards in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and California and, and around the world, really. And that to me does seem like something more than just regular run-of-the-mill um, flesh and blood creatures. Yeah, well, like I said, you know, when I got involved this many, many years ago, I've always was convinced that Bigfoot was an unknown physical creature. And until I began to see so much data from so many different people who didn't know each other, had no interest in it, wanted no publicity. I mean, 99% of the people I interview want no publicity. And uh, they have nothing to gain by telling me these stories. And when you give me these little details over and over hearing the same thing, you've got to realize there's something going on out there. Right. It, it's it's more of a unified field of, of uh, creature, creatures and not just the way they look, but their behaviors, you know. It's, it's, you feel like you're dealing with the same creatures, and yet they don't really have any real relation to the actual um, flesh and blood ones that we're used to, to working with. So, yeah, <laughs> that's, that, that's something I've been really thinking a lot about, you know, how, how they are intertwined with um, the, the deep recesses of the human psyche, perhaps, or other realms. You know, they may actually exist in what we, in our limited way, call reality, but they're just not on the, the uh, quote-unquote wavelength we are. And yeah. so we don't, we don't always perceive them in their totality. Yeah, and, and again, it may be different aspects of this. It, it involves different personalities, different backgrounds of people. I mean, years and years ago, I, I tried to begin to study the background of witnesses and just – didn't have the time or the capability or you know to do it because we all did this out of our own pocket and working full time having families and just limited to what you could do. But um, one thing I found a long time ago was sometimes you would have instances, for example, with a UFO where you had a group of people, and only certain people within that group could see the object hovering overhead, and the other people couldn't experience it. And it may well be that certain people have certain abilities that they're able to perceive some of this phenomenon, other people can't. Or the phenomenon might be attracted to them. That's a really mm. good point. Very good point. You know, I saw well, some the other oh yeah, about go ten ahead, days Linda, ago. Please, yeah. Oh, no problem. I just it's just I'll tell this real quick. I haven't told this to anybody really because it's one where I'm going, Oh my goodness and yet I kinda of have um backup that it that it occurred. There was an announcement from um one of the T V channels or something that there were going to be big air air flight, military air flight maneuvers going on over Rock County and Dane County, and you shouldn't worry if you heard them. And so I was sleeping, and I woke up, I heard this kind of um, very airplane-like sound, and then it changed. There was this whooshing sound that I can't even describe because I've never heard it before, and it was really close to the ground, it seemed. And I, I sat bolt upright in bed fast enough that I woke up my husband. He usually, he usually is not a person that wakes up for you know, hell or high water, whatever. But he woke up and he said, what is it? And I said, did you hear that? He said, And he said, yeah. And I got up, jumped, jumped to the um, the floor, opened the curtains, and looked out at our backyard, which borders on kind of a conservation area. And way up above the high trees, these were not short trees, so I don't know how far it was in the sky. From the whole left of what I could see to the whole right, there was this arc of lighted something. I don't know what it was. The shape of it from one side to the other was if you had this mammoth-sized horse's tail, and then the, where, the, where the, the tail joined the horse's posterior um, would be where the – it was almost like a rocket nose, but it wasn't a rocket. The whole thing was, was bent. 
And I said, you got to see this. you got to see this. And he says, what is it? I said, it looks like, looks like sort of like a meteor. And he said, well, is that what just lit up our whole bedroom? And just just my act of opening that curtain, I didn't even think about it at the time, but I realized it, it had illuminated our bedroom before it kind of kept arcing down out of sight toward the, the right-hand horizon. I have no idea what that was. Very interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, we're getting uh now we're getting a lot of reports of large triangular objects again being reported around Pennsylvania and other areas as well. And uh but yeah, there there's so much various phenomena going on around the country right now from what I'm hearing, it's just amazing. Yeah, I, it makes me wonder. I hate to be too conspiratorial, but I thought maybe Somebody knew that there were going to be odd things happening, and they told us that there were military maneuvers going on in the night skies, which, <laughs> you know, I I actually have been on a couple of those those flights with, with back when I was with the newspaper. I got to do a refueling trip and stuff. They do that kind of stuff out over Lake Michigan. They don't go over the most populous counties when they do their military training because obviously they're training new people, and, you know, you don't want to have – your uh, population centers with novice fighter pilots or um, right, whatever right, kind right. of things they yes. are of you, you know, and yet, uh, and it did sound like an airplane at first, you know, if I hadn't heard that second undescribable sound, um, and again, I just, I just can't even say what it sounded like. It was so unusual. But the backup was that my husband realized that it was illuminating the room. And yes, I was too. Yes, I was yes. too busy looking at the light phenomenon myself to even process that fact at the time. So, there you have it. My secret happening. Now, I wasn't going to tell anybody. And now I've told everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. Yeah, there's. Um, I've heard over the years. I've had various incidents where something was hovering outside of a house and illuminated the inside window. Now, here's another, just to give you an idea of another very bizarre cryptid story with a UFO, which is completely different than most people heard about. And this was just uh, in 2012 in Washington County, outside of Pittsburgh, where there's been a lot of activity down there even last year. And um, this person was in his living room of his home on the second floor of the house playing video games, his wife was sleeping in the other room. Suddenly, um, the whole inside of the living room is illuminated from the outside by this brilliant white light. So the guy runs over to the window, and hovering right out in front of the window is this huge, vertical, metallic, football-shaped object. It's, um, and it has two very long rows of luminous lights going through it uh, horizontally. And the thing's just hovering there, and it begins to move off. And the guy uh, runs, grabs the uh, unit because he has a video camera, and he gets a few seconds of video of this thing as it's moving away. So anyhow, the next day, he goes outside to look around where the thing had been hovering. There was some construction going on at the time, and he looks around, and he says, right over the area where this thing was hovering, he said... There was a rubble of concrete fragments where the UFO hovered, and he recounts finding a large slug-like creature slithering in the weeds. The thing was shiny black like a slug with no apparent eyes or appendages, about two and a half to three feet in length, seven to eight inches in thickness. And it was withering in around the weeds and then went back into the hole. And he tr went, tried several times to get pictures of it back and forth to get his camera, but he never saw it again. And apparently Nick Redfern had a somewhat similar case in England, I believe, a number of years before. Wow. Good heavens. Oh, would you excuse yeah, me just a minute? I don't think I I'd like to, to meet the large the phone. Phone. Linda, I'm going to let you, leave you and Stan chat for a second. I just need to step away for a moment, please. Thank you. Okay, sure, sure. So, yeah, that's that's amazing. Um, wow. <laughs> Am I just, just kind of going in a lot of directions right now? So, What's your favorite thing that's been reported to you? Oh, my um, gosh. Well, I, I'm probably the most interesting subject is the Bigfoot phenomena. And more and more, I'm getting so many of these strange, high-strangeness Bigfoot reports. There's just more and more coming in. I mean, I've just been concentrating on that because 
you know, when you get so many reports from different locations, different areas, from really credible people, you've got to realize there's something going on here. And I think a lot of these things are reporting could be clear, clues to the phenomena. And uh, just like the smell, I mean, you've had many cases where there have been strong, strange odors associated with cryptids. And with Bigfoot, very common, this terrible, overpowering, sulfur, rotten egg, dead animal smell, but not in all cases. So in many cases, there's no odor whatsoever. My feeling is that the smell is associated with the process from how these things come in and out of our, our reality that has something to do with that process. That's just my theory. That would make a lot of sense. That happened to Sanjay and I um, uh, maybe two years ago when we were on a winter trail um, kind of deep in the Kettle Moraine, and I saw a tree next to the trail that just looked it had scrapes and it was big and it was gnarly. And it looked like something might have might sit there, you know, and look over the whole trail. And I said, I said, would you mind if I just stepped around behind that tree a second? I want to see if it's got hairs or something else. And I looked around, I stepped around behind it. He was kindly holding my my backpack so I could climb up there a little bit. And all of a sudden, I got the most gagging, foul, awful smell. It was just like burning my nostrils. And, and it was you know, awful. I, I, it was I, awful. I could hardly, yeah, well, I could hardly stand it. And I got down, and I, I went over, and, and I said, Sanjay, do you smell that? And he was already um, turned at bending over at the waist, gagging. <laughs> And he handed me back my backpack, and we got out of there. It, it was horrible. And the weirdest thing was, it stayed like it, it was on our clothes, our you know heavy jackets, until we got mm-hmm. to the edge of the park. Because I was thinking, oh man, we're gonna have to smell this riding in the car, you know, all the way back. And we didn't. It was gone, and it was so vile and so heavy, and nothing we expected. That was not in the playbook, you know. It just, it just occurred, and yet. Then it was gone. Yeah, interesting. Was, well, I can tell yeah. you on one occasion I did get to smell it. And I'll tell you the story because it's a fascinating story. So this was during the 1973 Bigfoot outbreak. And I got a call from a police chief in one of the small towns out along the ridge who wanted me to come down to interview two women who had a very strange mm-hmm. experience. They had come to the police department because they heard rumors They knew about all the articles in the paper of people seeing Bigfoot, and they heard rumors that the local police had shot and killed this thing, and they wanted to look at it to see if it was the same thing that had been around their house. And this was early morning, I believe in August 73, very hot night. This woman's laying in her bed, tossing and turning. Something awakened her, and she turned around, and only a few feet from her bed is the window. And this creature was had pulled the drapes back and was bent down, crouched down, pulled the drapes back, and was looked directly at her, right into her face. This uh-huh. window was nine feet off the ground. She got a very, gave us a very detailed look on what this creature looked like. She was very, very upset. She said the creature walked back from the window, but she heard no sound, and apparently a short time later, it walked around the other side of the house where her daughter was sleeping, and her daughter became very upset, saying she saw the largest shadow she had ever seen. And about that time, this horrific odor begins to emanate all through the property into their home, like something rotten and been dead for a long time. When the police chief had oh, me go down boy. three days later, you could still smell it in the house. Uh-huh. Wow. Good heavens. have it evaporate. <laughs> Yeah. We, we we must have been lucky at that. Wow. Yeah, it's like it's Good an entity of a Well, I know when it happened it to Sanjay and I, we both felt like it was directed at us. Like sort of like a, yes. a skunk spray at you, you know, and that it was being used as a get out of here sort of thing. Yes. But yes. Yeah. You and know, and I'll yeah, go ahead. I just said it's a, it, it was subjective, you know, of our our opinions of it. Yeah, it's it's a fascinating subject. And and uh, Sanjay, you brought this up, I think, right before Linda called. You talk about the malfunction in the cameras. This is something that's yes. been showing up more and yes. more in both the yes. cryptid and the UFO field. I started running into this mm-hmm. many years ago, and many people in the paranormal field are doing ghost research 
they'll tell you the same thing is going on in their field. And the more I know about these phenomena, it may well be that a lot of the paranormal phenomena and the cryptids and the UFO stuff might somehow have some relationship. And I'll just give you an example of a couple cases in recent years. Beautiful morning. This was, I believe, four years ago up in the mountains uh, um, on the Westmore Fayette County border. Early morning, beautiful morning, a man sitting by his window drinking coffee. All of a sudden, it got pitch black out like this terrible strike came out of nowhere, but it wasn't supposed to storm. His big dog's lying there. His dog goes with him everywhere. So the guy gets up to see what's causing this darkness outside. He grabs his fully charged cell phone. He calls his dog that always goes with him, but the dog would not go outside. The man steps outside, goes into the driveway, and 500 feet above him is this huge, huge, solid black triangle object making no sound hovering over his head. First thing he does, he grabs his phone, fully charged to take a picture of it. It completely discharges the battery instantly, has no charge in it. And there were other yeah. EM effects on the farm as well, okay, because we were up there with yeah. my team. Okay. Oh, Another so. case, June 1st, 2013, busy highway, Route 30 outside of in North Huntington, outside of Pittsburgh. Here's a woman, mm -hmm. did not believe in UFOs until this experience, has her three-year-old child with her. About 10 o'clock, she's come out of convenience store, riding down 30 eastbound on her cell phone, tells me she has to stop and break right in the middle of the highway. There's no cars near her. They're all further down and behind her. She says the reason she had to stop right in front of her is this huge, solid, metallic, rectangular object low off the ground taking up all four lanes of the highway. It's silent. The lighting on it is unlike navigational lighting. Her baby yells, Mommy, three-year-old yells, Mommy, flying iPad in the sky. She's on her cell phone. She has to drive underneath it. She goes underneath it. She loses her cell phone signal. All the electronics in her car dash goes out. So the clock goes off. The radio goes off. I think the, I forget what else. Temperature goes off. She tries to take a picture with her cell phone. It would not let her go into the photo mode. When she drives down the road, all the electronics comes back on. That's just an example of what's going on you're not hearing about. Mm -hmm. That is that is a big thing into yeah. the hunting things, too. I mean, we can basically use, um, I have a tri-field meter that I take out with me. It's the elect electromagnetic um, vibrations, whatever you want to call them, that are um, kind of just, just foiling us in our efforts to study them. And yet, I mean, both, both the uh, ghost phenomena and the creature phenomena both have these um, anomalies, in, uh, according to our way of looking at them, of electromagnetic properties. They're just enough off from our realm of electromagnetic frequencies that we can operate in, is my opinion, that either they affect the camera or the camera can't quite capture them. You know, again, it, it keeps getting to that. And, you know, this is what I always um, go back to that I heard, I've heard from Native American friends for the last 25, 26, 27 years when I ask, the people who are deep into the tribal lore, you know, who, who know it, they've all told me that these things are can be solid when they're here. They can go back as complete spirit creatures to where they came from, but they can also be in between. Yeah. And that, it makes the most sense. for, And it matches up the, the data that we get the best of any other yeah. paradigm. Did you hear me talking earlier to Sanjay about the... Uh the, the direct correlation between the energy fields and the creature and Bigfoot encounters? Um, yeah, I think I was just, uh, yeah, I, I was listening at that okay. point. Yes. Well, that's and something, I think there's no doubt in my the, mind, there's definitely a, an energy connection with the appearance of these creatures and UFOs as well. And um, it, 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 it's showing up, and yes, I've had numerous cases with Bigfoot and other cryptids, for, mainly with Bigfoot, though, where some of the body is physically solid, other parts mm -hmm. of the body is misty or cloudy, or you can see mm -hmm. through it. Right, and Dog yep. Man, too. Yes. You hear that with yeah. the Dog Man reports? They'll say it's like the Predator movie, you know, where the yeah. Predator is sort yeah. of coming in and out or shimmering. You can you can get its light signature but not really see it clearly. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We we're talking about, and then I'll give you something even a little stranger because I was a witness to this part of it, and it's something rarely happens out here. 
I guess it's much more common out in the West, other parts of the country, but, you know, there's some people who claim that they've had telepathic communication with Bigfoot. And I can tell you, of the hundreds of cases I worked on, it's extremely rare. Very few people talk about that out here. And it's not a common factor at all. But on one case back, probably 1980s, I was out investigating a series of Bigfoot sightings not far from the Chestnut Ridge. And I had my team out there, and there was a number of people out there where this creature kept coming back. And one of the persons in the group said that this thing, she believed it was mentally trying to communicate with her at times. While we're there, Mm -hmm. she tells us that this creature communicated with her and told her that the next morning, about 15 miles away, so we're in Westmoreland County, and she said over a little town called Homer City, Indiana County, there would be a UFO incident. And lo and behold... Early the next morning, over Homer City, PA, in Indiana County, there's multiple reports of this very strange, weird sound right over top of Homer City. They could never figure out what was causing it. It was enough to get the police and the fire departments to go out and search, and it made the news. That's pretty specific. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I was there when that happened, so I can vouch for that happening. Yeah. I mean, you can't even say, well, that's just kind of... uh... Air, you know, airy fairy or whatever. That's that's very specific. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. You have to wonder where they're getting their information. Yes. Or or what we're yeah. dealing with. That's exactly yeah. what I mean. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I still don't think really anybody knows 100% for sure. Maybe there are people who've had far deeper experiences, and and we just aren't privy to them. But I um, don't think. I, yeah, the the more we know about it, I don't think anybody knows for sure. We've got a lot of clues. We're getting a lot more information. Personally, I don't think the government knows either. They know a lot more about the UFO phenomena telling us. There's pretty. I have some pretty good indication of some things that happen here in Pennsylvania from other areas that the government is probably interested in Bigfoot as well. In fact, I would say from what experiences oh, yeah. I have in the 70s, they're interested in Bigfoot as well. They have a lot more information at times, but they don't have all the information themselves. They're trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, well, I see, think that was uh, uh, with the uh, mystery cat investigations, too. You know, they, they do not want to admit that, that there are anywhere near as many mountain lions in this country, especially in the Midwest, as we have people reporting, and especially not black ones. They're not supposed to exist at all, and yet over over half of the uh, the reports are like 150 from this one little area that I've been working with are the black ones, and yet exactly. they don't exist. Mm. You know, and yep. it's just a direct parallel to what you're saying. The, the mountain lions part of it, which I've been involved in deeply for years and years, is completely separated from the black panther sightings going on in Pennsylvania and other areas. So when people think of black panthers, you're talking about black leopards or black jaguars that shouldn't be around here. But even as I mentioned to Sanjay a little bit ago, over the years, sometimes you have an outbreak where you have both Bigfoot and Black Panthers being seen in the same area or sometimes True. seen together. True. Yeah, there mm-hmm. have been Bigfoot sightings around this particular area, too. But the thing is, people are seeing the tan ones and the black ones walking around together. And sometimes things that look like they're, they're hybrids or they're prey. And so I, we, we do think that um, it's probably a, a jaguar or two that have made it and that there's actually yeah. that they actually never left this one particular area though they were supposed to be exterminated well and maybe some hmm. but but we don't know that and again my native american friends um in several different unrelated cases have said well you know the tan ones are just actual animals but the black ones are spirit animals yeah so let me tell you one oh. very interesting last story about a black panther yeah. up in fayette county again near the ridge where all this weird stuff goes on. This was a number of years ago. A guy's coming home late that night, I think, from work. His car's overheating. He goes into his garage to get a can of antifreeze. He's pouring the antifreeze in the car out in the country. He hears this loud growl. He turns around to look, and here's this pretty large black house cat about 20 feet away growling at him. Doesn't pay much attention to it. He goes back to pour more antifreeze. About a minute or two later, he hears a much louder growl, and he turns around, and this cow, house cat has now physically grown another foot. 
He runs Whoa. into that and runs into the garage oh. to grab his pistol. He comes back out. By the time he gets out, this big house cat is walking up the road, has bright yellow, glowing yellow eyes, and is now a full-size black panther like you would see in the zoo. He fires oh a shot at it. It turns around, walks away, and physically disappears right in front of him. Oh, my goodness. No, that, Ooh, yeah. The growing, the growing panther, I've never heard that one. Wow. That's amazing. That's yep. amazing. Good heavens. Wow. We live in a very mysterious world, and much stranger than yes. anybody realizes. <laughs> we we do. Oh, you know, well, I was just saying it. My, 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 I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. I was just saying it goes back to way back to the 60s and 70s. I was just looking at my one of my favorite books from the boards, Janet and Colin, Alien Animals. Yes. Yeah. Which yes, yeah, great is, book. Yeah, it is. It's a classic, classic, and, and, and it's basically the same thing. They they came to the ba- same conclusion. It's in a different generation, basically. Right, and they actually mm-hmm. mentioned some of my cases in that book from the 70s I investigated. Yes, yes. yes. I, yes. I just saw that. I was just going through it today, as a matter of fact. Wonderful. So, Wonderful. All uh, 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 Linda and Stan, I, I hate to interrupt, but believe it or not, we are almost out of, of time this evening. Um, I, I <laughs> Two hours has Blown past lickety split. I I can't believe it. And I, Linda, thank you so much for calling in and speaking with Stan. I so appreciate it. And well, it, it's well, I'm glad I did. I, it, to, it, it I'm glad you did too. Thank you. Yes, Stan. And it, it, but it, what it's what's great about it is that it's corroboration of everything that Stan is doing. You're corroborating here in Southern Wisconsin, and. It, it just says that there's something really curious going on if all this activity is being reported and documented and these yes. creatures are being encountered and, and people are talking about them. It, it's they are, not and they're not being a, bullied out of it anymore either. That's why my next book is – the one coming out is called I Know What I Saw because that's what everyone yes. says. Yes, yes. It's, it's like the universal you know, tagline, I know what I saw. And uh, but that's being said, um, Linda, and uh, uh, just very quickly before we go off the air, uh, for everyone listening, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, please join me next week at 7 p.m. Central, uh, as I will welcome again my wonderful good friend Linda Godfrey, and also Jay Pachochin, and the three of us will be having a terrific conversation about all manner of paranormal topics. And then again, uh, I do want to thank Stan Gordon for joining us this evening. Stan, this has been a fantastic show. I, I just, I'm just blown away by everything you've shared tonight. It has well, thanks really for having been me on. incredible. And thanks for having me on. I have a feeling we could be talking. Yes, thank you. And thank you for being here. And I have a feeling we could be going for 24 more hours and still not cover everything. Uh, that you've uh, been documenting and uh, getting reports on and hearing about. and I, <laughs> I, That's it. Well, people I, go I, to my I, website, stangordon.info, to check it out, and my books are all available on Amazon.com. There you okay, go. Terrific. And I've got and lindagodfrey.com. Yes. My books are available there, yes. too, and, and other places. So we're yes. findable. And, and as someone <laughs> who's who owns them and loves them, they are all great books. I highly recommend them. They are each of them wonderful uh, troves of of documentation and research and investigation. So highly recommend books by Stan Gordon and by Linda Godfrey, all available on Amazon.com. And Stan and Linda both have their own blogs where you can contact them. And again, as I said, we are just about out of time. But again, Stan, thank you so much for being my guest this evening. Linda, thank you so much for calling in. And uh, we will be back next week again at 7 p.m. And, oh, that voice really irritates me. I'm yeah. sorry. It just drives yeah. me up a wall. Stan <laughs> yeah, should call in next week. You could just keep going then. Pardon? Yeah, oh, Stan, call would in. you call in next week when I, we have Linda and Jay on the, on the, on the program? Uh, yes, but do me Stan? a favor. If, I, if I'm in town, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to be, but if I'm in town, send me an email with a reminder, and I'll put it on my calendar. 
I sure will, Stan, and I'll be happy to do that. And, Linda, I look forward to welcoming you and Jay Bachocha next week. And everyone else, again, thank you for joining us. Everyone, please have a wonderful evening. Good night, and God bless.